This is going to be about your email newsletter. Not every single email that you send, like fundraising emails, we're gonna focus primarily on your email newsletter. So the agenda is this, the benefits of split testing your email newsletter, so we're really clear about it. And then how do you actually do split testing? And I'll show you a couple of different examples, and then we'll go through each split test, subject line, sender, and send times, all right? So the first topic is, what are the benefits of split testing your email newsletter? Increase open rates, increase click-through rates, and also it's a pragmatic way of listening to email subscribers. So usually when we think about listening to our community, we think about using Twitter, using Facebook, using social media, or talking to them in person at an event. Uh, an email we don't really think of as a listening tool, but in a way, regular split testing is in a sense to practice of listening to email subscribers, listening to what they like, what they prefer, what they're clicking on, what they're opening on, opening. Uh, and then you can obviously improve your communication based on that. You never really want to approach your newsletter this way or really any email with, hey, we read about this best practice. Let's just go ahead and start doing it in our email marketing software. So let's just say that you come up with two different subject lines and you think they both might be really great for your email newsletter, what you can do is you can do a split test to a small percent of your list, essentially allowing them to vote, just a small percent of your email subscribers, and they choose which one they like, and then obviously you can go ahead and roll out that winner to the rest, okay? So again, you know, you test out two different subject lines, send it out to the winner, and they appreciate it, and they will show their appreciation by uh, higher open rates and higher click-through rates. First step is to write your email message. Then you're gonna copy this message and you'll vary one element, right? So the element might be the header image at the top of the email, uh, particular calls to action in the email, your subject line, the sender, the send time, right? So these are different elements that you can test with split testing. And so you'll, you'll uh, make a copy of that message, change one element, and then you'll test that variation with about five to 10% of your list, right? And then, of course, you send the winner to the rest of the list. And I love this graphic here uh, where you are testing different elements, you know, so let's say subject line A versus subject line B. Subject line A, it just got one click from the group, from the sample group, that small percent, but B received a lot more clicks. So this one is the winner. We're going to send out B to the rest of the list. Now, here's how to do it. In MailChimp, if you use MailChimp, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, MailChimp will basically ask you, what do you want to test? Do you want to test subject lines, from names, delivery dates or times? You can also do other types of split testing as well. And you simply select you know, your subject line and go through the process. It's fairly straightforward. You pick the, the percent of your test. In this case, it's 20%. And you can also set MailChimp to automatically send the winner to the balance of the list automatically. Once the winner is selected 24 hours later, that email will get fired off automatically. So you don't have to worry about it, right? Constant contact is a little bit different. You're going to create two test contact lists, and then you're going to copy 10% of your contact list into each test list. The instructions are right here. I'm not going to get into the details on constant contact or any specific email marketing tool. Any email marketing tool will allow you to do split testing, okay? So they all have this sort of feature. The way that you implement it is gonna be different for each vendor, right? So if you're wondering how to do it with your email marketing vendor, just contact them, contact support, and you'll get hopefully some really easy to follow instructions to do it. So now let's talk about these tests. Right. The first one is to test the subject line. Subject line in a newsletter is going to be fundamentally different from subject lines in, say, a fundraising email. And the reason why is because people are used to receiving your email newsletter. They get used to seeing a particular subject line for the newsletter. So, for example, in this one on the right, we see Habitat Wire March 2015. So that's the name of their newsletter, Habitat Wire. So people that subscribe to the newsletter, they are used to seeing this subject line. They might want to test it and just change it and vary the subject line a little bit.
but they want to test this out with a small percent of the list before trying and rolling it out with the entire group. And that's only because the subscribers tend to get used to a subject line from an email newsletter, right? So you can test the title of a lead article. In other words, instead of Habitat Wire, March 2015, they might put the title of a lead article, one of the articles inside the newsletter, the name of an event that's coming up. They might want to try that out. A pull quote from a story, a really great quote from someone, uh, an outcome story. And then obviously you want to test out uh, shorter and longer subject lines with your email newsletter. There's a really great tool that I love. It's called the Emotional Marketing Value Headline Analyzer. What you do is you just simply type in your subject line in the box, right? There's a link here in the slides. You can just click on the link and you'll go right to this web page. You put your subject line in the test field and you can test it. And basically it's going to give you the emotional marketing value. In other words, how likely is this subject line going to grab someone's attention? All right. So this is a tool you can use to tweak and test out and play with some subject lines and see if you can get a high score. The higher the score is, the more you're going to grab people emotionally with your subject line. Test two is a sender name. Now, sender name, you can test in every single email marketing tool. And you'll notice that in this case, uh, organization is no kid hungry. And we have the email is from the same organization. So basically, it's the same exact email. The sending email is the same. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the sender field. So for example, a newsletter, a newsletter, you might want to test having it come from the organization. You could also have the email newsletter coming from the executive director, you know, and try those different approaches and see if that improves the open rate on your email newsletter. You can also try a spokesperson. So if there's a well-known spokesperson, you can try that out. Another variation that I've seen occasionally, which is kind of interesting, is basically using the email as the sender. So in other words, in the sender field itself, rather than a name, like in these examples, you will see an email instead. Okay, so there's an email. And obviously the email that you put in the sender field can be different from the actual sending email. But I like that approach. It tends to kind of stand out in the stream or in the inbox. And apart from all these names, all of a sudden you see an email. So that stands out a little bit more. And, that, and that's kind of the idea is you want to grab somebody's attention, do something slightly different from what other organizations are doing with their newsletters or with their emails. Right. So that's test number two. Test three is going to be send times. Right. Uh, and the reason why time is important is because after you send an email, you're going to get most of your opens in that first chunk of time. So the time that you send it is going to be really important. And you have to think about is nighttime better? Is morning better? The weekends? What about the weekends? Are those, are those going to work? And of course, you could probably you could definitely Google some research about this. You know, what are the best times to send an email? And you can look at the latest research on it. And you'll find Thursday at three o'clock and you'll find Tuesday at one o'clock. You'll find a couple of different uh, arguments based on lots of data, which is good. But again, the problem is, is that that data is not a reflection of your people, your subscribers. So that's why it's good to test out and see if these send times might work for your organization before you just make a, a dramatic change. You know, basically just saying, oh, we read this blog post and we saw this infographic that says Thursday at 3 p.m. Let's just go ahead and do it. That is not the way to approach email marketing. So we have the three split tests, uh, subject line, like I said, we have sender. And then we have the send times. These are very basic split tests that you can do with your email newsletter. And by testing and tweaking these elements, you will increase your open rates with your email newsletter.